Good. Donks here. Donkeys is the, uh, you'll, you'll see this a lot online. People talk about donks or donkeys or quote unquote fish. All means the same, and here's the definition of that. They have no idea and are close to impossible to read because their decisions aren't based on the logical understanding of the game. Um, now, if you can get people believing that you're a donk or a quote unquote maniac when you're playing a big stack or a deep stack strategy, um, you'll be in a very profitable situation, a lot of live game situations especially. Um, donks and fish, they, what to say, they, they're new to the game very often. They're there for the fun of it. They're there to be social. They want to make contact. They want to make friends, whatever else. They're out to have a good time. And basically for these cats, it's going to the movies. They put their money down and it's the equivalent of putting 20 bucks on the table and taking your girl out uh, to see the latest film. They they're not professionals and yeah, I mean they're nowhere near professionals, they're not even decent players um, and for that reason you see this a lot you'll be playing against maniacs or donks or somewhere in between uh, funky lags that have no idea and um, then they make some bad moves and win and good players hit the roof they start making fun of them, they start yeah, giving them a hard time and what, what happens is that the these guys who are quite bad they they start either playing better right, or they get upset you know and then there's a there's a confrontation <laughs> looking at you um, you wanna you wanna avoid that you understand that it's it's a game right and if, if you start taking it too seriously it's time to take a break um, and this kind of stuff if you're if you're very tilt prone say take a couple deep breaths you know, relax uh, don't rip these guys heads off verbally when they pull the runner runner stuff don't uh, don't give them a hard time get be nice uh, make that connection with them you know and that, again they are your, your good customers in the long run and as always a good connection is better than a bad connection right so there's there's no point in really harping on these guys and giving them a hard time also not the maniacs because it's only it's only a negative expected value for you in the long run they're either gonna play better or they're gonna leave or they're gonna get upset and you guys are gonna get into a, a confrontation and that's yeah none of those three are anything that you wanna look for so understand the beast understand the the players that you have at your table understand the motivation for playing why they're there and again adjust accordingly and adjusting accordingly doesn't just mean adjusting your ranges it doesn't just mean adjusting your your style as such it doesn't mean adjusting your yeah your bet sizing whatever it very often also means adjusting to the social environment right? understanding the person understanding the human being that's still sitting next to you or in the online environment who's sitting across the table so for example you know with chats and tournaments and that kind of stuff the chat box these guys get to, the the donks and the fish and the maniacs and the lags and stuff like this these recreational players they they're all about the chat box and they <laughs> they you know they have all the little acronyms and they you do whatever they they do there in their chat boxes um, and you know I actually I, I never have it on um, uh, okay, outside of tournaments, and yeah, I mean, you can also talk back. I mean, if you do have the chat box on, chat box on for some reason, chat back with these guys. Get them, yeah, get them, you know, get them chatting. That's why they're there. They're having a good time, and the longer they stay, the better it is for your bankroll. So, um, yeah, so much of that. So finally, we here we've got here uh, loose passive players. Uh, these are your best opponents. Again, very very rare. Um, anytime it's passive. Um, it's good for you concerning your draws and here you got a typical loose passive passive player um, one one in three hands he's playing only raising one in twenty or fewer going to show down thirty percent of the time rarely raising post flop and folding yeah rarely to uh, see bets post flop you know because he is getting down to the showdown thirty percent of the time and yeah pre flop stats look like this upwards of forty uh, one fourth of that is being raised, if if that at all. 
uh, passive or loose passive passives are your gold mines <laughs> again uh, rarely going to see them um, but when you do it's definitely always a good thing and as always if you can be to, to their left it's even better so um, if you do have to choose players who are to your left however always put the passive guys to your left All right. you don't want the aggressive guys to your left because they're going to be raising you up putting you in tough spots and making you play out of position. These passive guys to your left let you draw cheaply and play more or less your game. Okay, Aggressive guys to your right, good players to your right, passive weak players to your left um, as a general rule. When you can then choose your seat of course. Uh, here we've got loose passive aggressive. Um, yeah, they're going to be limping, limp, limp calling, limp raising with aces uh, pre-flop. Um, can bluff from time to time and what you want to do is then again use this pot control against him and value bet the hell out of him when when you do have good hands yeah, two pair plus are better uh, again here these guys are a bit more aggressive uh, as indicated with the name and went to showdown is a bit bit less because of that aggression calling stations the so-called elephants you've got here 33 percent again every third hand more or less they're playing uh, raising about a third of that getting to showdown two times in five whenever they do play. Uh, really, really low aggression factor and almost never folding to seabeds, namely because they are calling stations. So when you see a guy who's only folding to a flop seabed 12% of the time, only make that seabed when you have it. Don't be making seabed bluffs against this guy because he's not going to let it go. It's pretty straightforward, but I think very few people really understand that. So when you're when you're planning your hand, you should be planning the hand for, I mean, the entire duration of the hand, all the way to the river. And this planning of a hand begins, of course, pre-flop. And it's based very much on the types of players that you're facing in relative position, which we will cover then in the next video on bet types and pop manipulations. You should definitely see that, but this kind of guy is not the one that you need to be c-betting uh, and, and semi-bluff uh, semi-bluffing, you don't need to be trying to push him off hands because he's not going to let it go. You just wait for your hand, flop that two pair better, uh, straights, flushes, whatever else, um, and or over pairs and top pair, top kicker are actually quite good against this guy because he's also going to play mid pairs all the way to the end and stuff like that. And value bet him to death. All right, he's not going to let it go and just, yeah, bet and bet big and let him pay you off all the way to the river. And these guys, again, calling stations are almost as bad as maniacs in regard to their ability to tilt other players, especially good players, because they won't let a hand go. doesn't mean that that's uh, a good way to play. To the contrary, it's, it's a very weak way to play. It's a very long-term losing way to play. But these calling stations do hit, and they're going to hit a lot more than other players because they, they're, they're in a lot more pots. They're involved in a lot more pots and they're involved uh, to the river in a lot more pots. So the ratio of the hands that they're going to actually hit is, is much higher than normal players. And you need to be ready for that. So again, Calling Station hits his Miracle River <laughs> for the 14th time. If you hit the roof, he's only going to play better, get upset, or leave, and you've lost a good customer. So understand the player type, adjust both in the poker environment and also psychologically and socially accordingly and you'll be yeah you'll be ahead of the game nine times out of ten so the stats here you see I mean the extreme guys are playing even almost a full range um, we've got here about twenty percent when shorthanded usually quite a bit higher I mean yeah, you're gonna see this anywhere from yeah, as it says yeah here I mean twenty is actually for these guys kinda low probably upwards of thirty yeah thirty on uh, Pre-flop raising, very rarely. Uh, went to showdown again almost every third hand that they play, and very often very passive uh, post-flop. You do get uh, calling, I mean, when the calling stations start, then, or anybody with this aggression factor, for example, uh, zero to one, maybe a little under two, whenever they do get aggressive post-flop and bet into you, donk into you, whatever, um, heads up, right? It's, I mean, even bad players get good hands and when the the weak and the passive start to make active bets you need to only play on with the nuts or really really strong nut draws otherwise yeah 
<laughs> you weren't properly paying attention to the player stats and you weren't adjusting accordingly. The rock, so-called rock. Extreme tight aggressive player. Uh, again, this is going to be yeah, very indicative of a short stack strategy player, um, although that's um, now that wouldn't be a professional short stack strategy player by any means, but um, you know, they're only playing 1 in 11, 12 hands, and raising, yeah, depending on the aggressive, uh, the aggressiveness of that player, no, a short stack strategy players are raising the exact same amount. VPIP to PFR is almost 1 to 1. Uh, and the, the kind of rocks that are weak rocks, these, this is a kind of typical, typical breakdown that you'll see for that kind of guy, you know. One third of all of his hands that he's playing, uh, he's raising. And yeah, getting a showdown under 20%, so like one in six times. Aggression factor of two, and that's yeah, that's pretty much how it is. So if you're very easy to read, of course, um, you know if he's raising three percent, you know exactly what his hand range looks at, which we'll get to here briefly. Uh, hardly ever steal raises, and he will three bet only with queens are better, ace king. Right. So yeah, you know exactly what you got with this guy, and yeah, if you can't beat that, <laughs> time to get out of the way, or uh, play in position for set value example um, again speculation hands against these kind of guys in position can be can be lucrative under certain circumstances again never fixate always adjust but that being said you have really big implied odds against anybody who's so tight like this um, you do normally want to see a higher winter showdown when you're playing your speculation hands only against one opponent uh, against multiple opponents you know Implied odds are as always higher, anyways. Um, so here we go. C betting seldomly. Da 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 da. Good. Preflop stats: five to twelve percent, uh, anywhere from zero to seven as a preflop raise percentage. Uh, you have your aggressive and your passive rocks, respectively. And short-handed rocks are going to look something like this. I mean, quite similar actually. Good. Now, short stackers. The hit and run guys, they back in the day, um, you could still buy in, and actually still on some sites today, you can still buy in for 20 big blinds as a minimum at any given table. And these guys have developed a strategy which is super, super tight aggressive. And it, yeah, you should see the video on short stack strategy play for what that exactly entails but they as you see here they buy in for 20 and then they they leave the table as soon as they get 25 big blinds or more so it's a hit and run strategy uh, calling is completely forbidden and yeah for professionals again um, you have a different type of short stacker which is a very often a fish or a quote unquote donk that we saw above who's playing with scared money buys in for the table minimum and yeah has really no idea yeah, and likes to play the game again. He's your he's your tourist, and don't hit the roof when you know when they yeah hit their unlikely uh, runner runners and whatever else is possible. Uh, just understand understand what's going on and yeah yeah try not to take it too personally. So this type of player rarely has uh, any more money than than the little bit that he has at the table. He wants to bet it all on a single hand double up. Yeah pretty much yeah, fish that just bought in for the minimum and is giving it a shot. So professional short stackers. Um, they are really, really difficult players. Uh, again, mathematical precision, super, super tight aggressive. And these stats here are from a buddy of mine who is a professional short stack strategy player. And that's how his stats actually looked after 100,000 plus hands at full tilt. Uh, he's playing 40 to 50,000 hands a month, playing ring games, not um, not rush tables, but yeah, 40 to 50,000 hands per month, about six hours a day. He won only in those 116,000 hands about 1,600 bucks. Okay, that is a big blind per hundred uh, ratio of 0.34 at the end of 400 and 0.14 at the end of 1,000. His all-in adjusted EV was seven over well over seven grand okay which represents uh, almost a seven big blind per hundred at NL 400 and a uh, six and a half at NL 1000 and here I've written you know variance haunts us all and it very much does what this means is that every time he pushed uh, he got it in not every time but on, on average he got it in so good 
whenever he was all in, that what he should have won, based on mathematics, was this number here. Okay? In addition to that. Now, he only won this due to variance again. It means uh, in these situations, you know, where he gets in with aces or kings versus queens or jacks, and he's got an 80% equity advantage. So everything that goes in the middle of that pot, 80% of it is his. And based on that, over this entire, uh, yeah, this entire amount of hands, 116,000, he should have won this much. He only won this much. So again, variance guys, make sure you have bankrolls that can handle that over over the long haul. Again, here VPIP, irrespective of the position, was only yeah almost nine percent of all hands. So one in eleven or one in twelve hands. And whenever he played, he was raising. Very few times, and this is very often when short stack professional short stack strategy players call uh, instead of raising preflop, it's going to be when they're completing in the small blind, and or uh, when they're late after multiple limpers, they a lot of short stackers, uh, short stackers will also overcall with uh, suited connectors and small middle pairs. But you'll find that too, uh, yeah, depending on the player. Three bets about five percent went to showdown at forty-three percent. You notice that's quite high. It's quite a bit higher than all the other guys that we saw above, because they are only on the table with 20 big blinds between let's say 25 and 15 big blinds at any given time and when they get involved they're very often all in pre-flop and if not pre-flop then definitely on the flop if they're gonna be playing at all and that that means that they're getting to the showdown whenever they're playing they're raising and whenever they're raising they're very often getting it all in so yeah that's why you know 43 percent uh in life play and actual play for this guy and his one money at the showdown was only 52 percent yeah, hence <laughs> the expected value, uh, just the expected value difference. Okay, his aggression factor uh, was at 6. As we had mentioned earlier, these guys are super aggressive. Aggressive uh, Aggression percentage was 21%. Uh, he was stealing at 26. And respectively from the cutoff, the button, and the small blind here at 1230, uh, 1231 and 50%. So guys, that um, that is a professional short stacker. And again, see the video on short stack strategy play for how you can adjust to that and how you can actually incorporate it yourself at certain stack sizes.